This short video will show you how to begin the process of registering with EA. From any page in the funding website, you can see register with EA in the top right corner. You select that, it will take you to the registration page. This page contains some key information you'll want to read before you start the process. Um, it outlines the benefits of registering with EA. It outlines the eligibility criteria for different registration types. It outlines the funding sources available, firstly, through the funding scheme for, local, uh, for regional and local voluntary youth organizations. And secondly, other annual funding opportunities, which are only available when budget is available. So they are very much subject to budget availability. Towards the bottom of the page, you will see the overview of the process of registration. This video will focus on step one only. Um, the referred online form here is at the bottom of the page. And that's the button that I will select and show you the process. So just simply select register with EA form and it will take you to this online page. First section of the form is about the organization. So the first question is organization name. Just simply put in the name of the organization who are expressed an interest to register with EA, the registered address of the premises, the council area is a drop down, please note Belfast is split into north and east and south and west. The postcode of the organization, And the last question on this page is the organization type. Um, you're a uniformed organization, a church-based organization, a community organization, or lastly, a school, and only schools should, should be selected an option. So for example, if I'm a BB or a GB or a Scouts group, that would be a uniformed organization. The next section is about governance. Um, if you're not familiar with these terms in relation to governance type, uh, please spend time, some time to read the descriptors or check with your management authority. Your board of trustees or your management committee will be familiar with your registration type. The vast majority are unincorporated associations. You will then be asked if you are registered with the Charity Commission. You do not have to be, so if you select no, that is totally fine. If you are, you will be asked for your registered Charity number here in question 8. So we'll select no. Um, if you're registered with Companies House, very similarly, you'll be asked for your registered company number. So just like no, that question will not appear. The next question is about your governing document. So you're being asked if you adopt the governance of a headquarter body. If so, select option two and then provide the name of that headquarter body here. If you have a governing document in the name of your own unit or organization, a colleague of, of mine will pick up your request and contact you and request a copy of that document along with some of their paperwork we'll cover later in the video. Um, we'll then be asked to provide the name and email address of your chairperson or equivalent. Um, so if you're uh, a charitable trust, for example, we ask that there's at least three people on the managing authority, whether that's a board of trustees or a management committee, whatever the equivalent is. So we have one, three names and three email addresses for three of those uh, people. So just simply a name and email for each of those. If you do have a management committee, please give us the chairperson, the secretary and the treasurer and um, in other contexts, just provide the equivalent. The next section is on safeguard. The first question is, does the organization have a safeguard and policy? Firstly, they can be provided prior to the visit. A bit like the governing document that will be requested before the visit. So a colleague will be in touch for a copy of that. The next question is if you work with young people aged 15 to 25. Uh, if you select yes, then you will be asked if your safeguard and policy includes that, if it covers it. So if you have one broad safeguard and policy for young people, and vulnerable adults or young adults, then simply select that our safeguarding policy includes 18 to 25. If you have a standalone adults at risk of harm policy, so you will have a standalone child protection policy up to the age of 18, and then a separate adults at risk of harm policy for young people aged 18 and over, then you select whichever is, a, is appropriate for you. So if you have one policy, select this. The next section is a declaration that you're compliant with the, the requirements in terms of insurance and health and safety. After that, we will ask for bank account details. So the bank account name, this should be 
the bank account you hold should be in the name of the organization. So in this example, I think I said it was called 123 Youth Club. So that should also be the name on the bank account, the bank account number, uh, the sort code, the bank name, Ulster Bank, Santander, whatever it is, the address of the bank, and the postcode for the bank. Lastly, there is another declaration. You confirm that the organization has an account in the register name of the organization provided on the form, and there are at least two unrelated signatories. The last section that before the form may branch out, depending on your response here, um, is whether or not you intend to register as a local voluntary youth organization, a regional voluntary youth organization, or a non-registered organization, which means you will only have access to the funding portal. You will not be considered an EA registered organization. So I select a local organization. I will be given the option to nominate a regional voluntary youth organization to provide me with support. Details of those support services are outlined here. This is an additional support service that all local voluntary youth organizations can avail of free of charge. There's no cost of this and, and the cost of any support services you do engage don't come from your budget. These organizations are funded separately to provide this support. And um, so if you do wish to avail of that support, select yes. And then here are groups who are currently able to provide that support. So if you want to select just first on the list. And you can proceed to the next stage. If you do not want to access that support, then obviously you will not be selecting a group. First question around your youth membership is how many members, young people are members of your provision aged four to eight? This is the same question, just for different age bands. Second question is for how many members you have within the age band of nine to 13? And thirdly, 14 to 18? 19 to 21 and 22 to 25. Just simply put in how many members you have in each of those age bands. Delivery of youth work, you're confirming here that you deliver youth work in line with D policy and priorities for youth. Um, yes, that's a requirement of registration. So if you select no, you will not meet the, the requirements to register with EA. Uh, the second question is about the youth work curriculum, and you confirm that you deliver a model, deliver youth work in line with a model for effective practice. Again, that is a registration requirement. So if you select no, um, that will be problematic. And we will offer support if, if you feel it's appropriate to continue with the registration process. But for now, um, we select yes. Staff and volunteers. Um, these questions are again numbers based. So how many part time staff? are paid through EA funding. If that's none, that's okay. Combined number of hours per week, we have no staff, so they're not doing any hours. How many full-time paid staff? It's like none. Obviously, you would put in the amount that's relevant for your organization. Zero hours. How many volunteers are active within your organization? If you have, say, three volunteers, for example, and if they do two hours per week each, then the combined number of hours is three volunteers doing two hours is six hours in total. Um, the next step, if you're registering as a regional or a local voluntary youth organization, will be for a verification visit. So a colleague of mine will pay a visit to you and your provision. So we will ask for who is the best person to contact. Um, likely your name who's filling out this form and your email address, your telephone number. The suitable days to accommodate a visit. Please note that the visit will take place when your provision is open. So if you run a drop-in club on a Tuesday night, for example, that's the only night you operate, only select Tuesday evening. Obviously, if you operate at different times of the week, select the, the appropriate times. This is a data protection statement. Please take time to read that um, and then declare that the information contained within this form is correct. Select this tick box. Provide the full name of the person declaring on behalf of the organization so that's likely the person filling out this form and your role within the organization um, whatever that role happens to be and then you go ahead and submit your response and a colleague will be in touch